Are you looking to actualize your inner Leonidas? Are you looking to find something for the Spartan in your life? Look no farther than Jardani Jovanovic. Jardani Jovanovic hair and skincare products made by real men for real men. Or as I like to say, be as sexy as you are deadly. Give 007 a run for his money. Awaken your inner John Wick with Jardani Jovanovic. Hair and skincare products. Take up the broken sword of your father and strike down the darkness. Amen. Greetings, everyone. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Nick. And we are the Goslings, a digital speakeasy of free thinkers, Christian authors, explorers of the esoterica, and general purveyors of buffoonery. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we have an amazing interview and conversation for you. Uh, but if you would, first, it really, really helps us if you would take up the broken sword of your finger, strike down that subscribe button, and while you're down there, tingle that bell. Yeah, yeah, give that bell a gentle caress. Or <laughs> keep your YouTube pimp hands strong and smack that bell. Smack <laughs> it like it owes you money. That's right. And if you've already done those things, well, first of all, thank you. Yes. Uh, but also, if you hit the like button, that would really, really help us because it shows the algorithm that you like this video and other people who have shared interest will also like it. That would help tremendously. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Uh, leave a comment, share it with your friends, send it to your enemies, <laughs> do all the things. <laughs> that's right. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> and without further ado, here is uh, this video's conversation and interview. We hope you guys enjoy it. That's right. Vertical bunch. Your YouTube feed is crap. Stop wasting your time watching bot-boosted shills and self-appointed gurus cloying for your attention. Instead, join the Goslings interview, live stream, and podcast. The Goslings, a dark lit digital speakeasy of free thinkers, a super chat of radical truth seeking wizards who eat trolls for second breakfast. Topics that'll make your mama's hair stand on end, ideas that'll make your pastor's knees knock, guests that will illuminate the hidden chambers of your mind, and interviews that strike down the darkness. Welcome to the Goslings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love um, it. Let's talk about altars. Yeah, yeah. So you had uh, you touched on altars a few times throughout our conversation here, and we were talking about uh, the dangers of altars uh, and the hidden dangers of altars, and how like they can exist in upper echelons of churches, you know, and they can just, they can seem like pillars of the allied Christian community and actually be, you know, something totally different. Yeah. Yeah. This is so sci-fi guys. I'm, I'm just going to, nice. my whole inner mon my whole inner monologue, I'm going to be like, Oh, people are going to think you're nuts, but it, it it's very well documented. But of course, we've already done the Mars rocks episode. So like that, you're that's fine. Right. You know. So they, they have an, they have an official narrative. So, uh, you know, way back when it started out as MPD, multiple personality disorder, then they upgraded that to DID, which is dissociative identity disorder. Uh, and so DID is the current phrase, I think, unless they've changed it again, but, um, they, again, it's a mental illness and it, you know, whatever <clears throat> and it comes from trauma and what that telling you is a lot of time the trauma is inflicted upon a child who otherwise wouldn't have had to have suffered the trauma but anyway uh it's a really strange back door of human personality there is this capacity in in all of us that if we are facing something that we absolutely cannot handle, that we can sort of literally dissociate from our body and go somewhere else. Now, that let's just pretend for a moment that that was a protective device. <clears throat> they, whoever you want to believe they are, whether it's militarized or occult or, you know, they discovered that when you're dissociated that stream of consciousness can be replaced with another individual right so when you're checked out and this is why the bible talks about you know always being sober-minded and vigilant 
right? And it talks about when, when an entity or a demon is cast out of you, that you don't leave the house empty or seven more will come back, right? So there's allusions yeah. to this that you don't ever leave your vessel empty. So when you're off astral projecting or you're tripping on ayahuasca and you're in an altered state of consciousness or you're dissociated, you're being hypnotized. If, if, you're, if you are in a place where your core spirit or your core personality is checked out, you're actually leaving the house unlocked when the door wide open and if you have a nefarious individual with the right skill set there they know how to put other personalities alters individuals however you want to say it there in in its place now where this works where this works for children who are being traumatized beyond anything we can believe is the core personality checks out and an altar comes and bears the brunt of that trauma for them. And as this individual is surviving their life, which is filled with abuse and trauma, various altars are, are taking the wheel for them. So you've usually got child altars. You've got, you've got the altar that's taking the brunt of the abuse who has all the memories and all the trauma and the scars. You've got defender altars, typically, where anytime the core is threatened, they will they will come out and it's defend. Really, um, it seems uh, pretty accurately represented in that movie Split. Uh, yes. I Am Night Shyamalan. That's exactly what that movie is about. And what's diabolical about that movie is uh, you've got you've got a uh the beast you know who is not one of the altars he he is something different and that's accurate as well because there's a lot of people that will have multiple altars but they can also be demonized so there can also be a demon and this is where this is where deliverance ministries really get into trouble and this is why the church has to understand these things if you try to cast an altar out of someone who's DID instead of casting out a demon. If you treat all those altars like demons, you are actually going to suppress that core personality deeper and deeper and deeper because the defender altars are going to come forward. You're going to scare the crap out of the child altars where, you know, uh, and If you are in deliverance ministry and you do not understand satanic ritual abuse or you do not understand DID, get out of deliverance ministry until you figure it out because mm -hmm. you are going to end yeah. up keeping those demonized people in even deeper and deeper bondage. You're going to push that core personality deeper and deeper and deeper away from, from deliverance. And these things are smart. Uh, these demons, they are drama queens. They <laughs> love they love the whole exorcist thing where they can scream and spit up pea soup and mm -hmm. um yeah it's a they, it's a chance to like be on stage baby they you get all the time and attention it. they want yeah they love it and what's funny about this is they can put on a show and scream and gargle and say no and and all this <laughs> stuff right and then what they do is they pretend in many cases uh, that they're being cast out uh, or they are cast out, but they're not telling you there's 20 more or whatnot. And the person walks away, patting themselves on the back that they cast this demon out. And, you know, it, it's always easy to blame the person when you see the person later and they're even worse off. Well, they must not have meant it or they're not really a Christian or they must have done drugs again. But it's the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, um, if you didn't successfully cast that demon out, if it was just giving you a show, or if that person isn't demonized, they're just DID and you were just dealing with an altar, uh, the way that you integrate an altar is very different from how you cast out a demon. And they're, they're not to be dealt with in the same way. And so uh, these altars have to be healed, so to speak, Um and integrated back into the core. Uh, they're not to be cast out like like demons. And it's a very complex topic that not a lot of people 
know how to talk about. And that's why losing Russ was such a loss because he had such an understanding of this. And what's difficult is a lot of survivors of satanic ritual abuse, which are the ones really with a lot of the knowledge, as you can understand, because most of them are targeted individuals that still are members of generational occult families, they're not going to get online and show their face and explain all this stuff, you know? So uh, we we really are in a, a place of ignorant dependence upon either the spirit of God or these, these survivors to, to help us uh, to figure out what's going on because uh, the, the, the DID and the altars make it, 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 it's sometimes hard to differentiate between an altar and a demon because if you get a really strong defender altar where their job is to defend that core, they can get very angry if they feel threatened. And so if you go in there and you start casting out demons and things like that, and you rile up a defender altar and they come forward, you're you're gonna think they're a demon. And it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work to cast out altars. And, and it's hard because if you go to the secular world and you read books on MPD or on DID, it's all, from a DSM-5 perspective, that it's a mental illness or, you know, there there's no admission that this could be something spiritual or that there could be demons involved. And, you know, it's not politically correct to call a mentally ill person demonized, right? Uh, and and, and, that, and that's where it gets really tough. And there's gray areas, even in scripture. There, there's, a, there's a story that appears in Matthew... Mark and John, where the there's a boy that throws himself into the fire and the father mm -hmm. presents um, the son to Jesus. And you get a little bit of different information if you that's my favorite verse. Read. That's the one where he says, uh, I believe, oh Lord, help thou my unbelief, yep. right? Yep. Yes, yes. Yeah. I love this passage too. And and what I love about it is if you go into Bible Hub, you know, when you look up a verse and it's got every translation, if you run down the gamut of that verse in Bible Hub, um in one translation, he'll say, help my son, he has seizures. Yep. And in another, in another translation, he'll say, help my son, he has epilepsy. In one mm -hmm. translation, it says, help my son, he's moonstruck. Mm -hmm. And in another translation, it says, help my son, he has an epilepsy demon. Okay, so does he have seizures? Does he have epilepsy? Or is he possessed? And this is where it gets really sketchy in our politically correct society because you can't just run around calling everybody with epilepsy or everybody with schizophrenia or everybody with any sort of a disease or you know a, a special need as well if a demon was cast out of you you'd be healed i mean this is ridiculous you know but but what i think we've lost sight of in the modern world is that demons can masquerade as symptoms so that you misdiagnose people. You're like, well, this looks exactly like epilepsy. So it's epilepsy. And then you do the worst thing in the world you can do for that person. You put them on medication. And so now you've got a potential pharmacia mm -hmm. situation coming in. Mm -hmm. And so what's really fascinating to me about that particular verse is, and this is this pertains, I think, to SRA. If, if someone said, you have to write a master's dissertation on where SRA is shown, show me in scripture, SRA. Uh, this is where I'd start. I would have to theorize. I'd have to postulate. But in one of the passages, I think it's the Mark passage, Jesus asks the father, how long has this been happening? And he says, since childhood. Now, that means he wasn't born with it, right? It, at some point in childhood, he developed this behavior. And when you look at the different words like moonstruck or even lunatic, um, he has a lunatic demon, I think the Aramaic uh, version says. Luna comes from moon, and we get that in one of the translations, moonstruck. In the first century and before, uh, we had people who worshipped moon gods, uh, like Seen is one of them, like the, the people of Jericho worshipped the moon god, which is spelled sin, S-I-N, and uh, 
this is why on day seven, uh, which, which was the Sabbath day, when they, when they went around seven times and the walls of Jericho came crashing down, we know from the placement of the festivals and things that the day that the walls came down, it was a full moon. And God was literally sending a message to the people of Jericho that when your God is in full power, <laughs> I still overpowered you. That's like, so awesome. the, the, yeah, they were moon. Yeah, they were moon God worshipers. So when the father says to Jesus, it's been happening since childhood. And in one of the translations, it says he's a moonstruck or he was a lunatic demon. Lunatic demons were the demons that would come or would manifest and attach to people during rituals where they were worshiping their moon god. And so what I think I could potentially piece together from that scripture is maybe the reason this kid got sick in childhood was that he was taken to a ritual or a festival uh, where this moon god was worshipped, and he acquired an attachment when those demons that they were calling forth manifested. Interestingly, Jesus doesn't say to the boy, do you have faith? Or, you know, he's addressing the father. And, and so as the father, who is perhaps the one that potentially took his family to that or made the decision, as, as the high priest of his home, he likely made the decision, this is the god that we're going to worship. And so Jesus had to address the father there directly as well. And so what's interesting to me about the verse where it says this has been happening to him since childhood is age three and age eight are significant ages when it comes to trauma-based mind control. Uh, a significant amount of the trauma has to happen by three years old because the brain development then is is where it needs to be. It's it is you're redirecting the the brain circuits um, through these trauma based things. The interesting thing about eight years old is uh, th this tie into epilepsy, and if you read right. On the site, I, I had all this in my original book. Um, they only come out at night and I pulled it out because it didn't directly, directly apply to sleep paralysis. So I had to take it out. But uh, right on, I think it's the Childhood Epilepsy website. Uh, it says right on that page that the vast majority of, of children who uh, get get childhood epilepsy it's the result, it's the direct result of childhood sexual abuse. And mm. so that's a big part of trauma-based mind control. And if you compare a lot of the symptoms of having a seizure, like the lights that are flashing in their mind's eye and, and the very, the seizures, et cetera, et cetera. If you read the physiological aspects and side effects of a Kundalini awakening, where you're uncoiling the serpent up the chakras and you're opening the, the mind's eye, or you know, you're know you having a pineal gland, a third eye awakening. They talk about flashing lights in the mind eye. It, it's many of the same symptoms. And so when you've got sexually abused children who are complaining about seizures, which are really just lights in the eye, et cetera, et cetera, you really have to do further investigating to figure out if that child is being ritualistically abused or if they really have some sort of genetic anomaly or some sort of uh, genetic uh, presupposition to this disease or whatever. And so that's where it gets really tricky for me because there, there is a biblical example of that and there is evidence even on the epileptic websites that childhood sexual abuse is involved in this and it's not something that they're necessarily born with. So I think that this is where we have to maybe, well, I don't know that the medical profession, you know, is going to, is going to do any of this kind of investigation, but this is where it gets tricky because they have made it politically incorrect for us to ever ascribe anything spiritual or demonic um, or, or good even like you, uh, they, they do all these studies on uh, sick like patients and this set of patients is prayed over and this patient isn't. And the patients that are prayed over have 
a more of a success rate, but they still won't make that conclusion because it's it's just a coincidence because we can't make a spiritual conclusion. And so uh, I certainly don't think that everybody out there who has a disease is has a disease because there's a demon inside of them that needs to be cast out. That's ridiculous. But what's sad is I think that that does still go on. And there are people who I think are needlessly suffering. Uh, there's even a psalm where David said, that all of the bones in his body were wasting away. And then he confessed his sin and he, he finally got it out on the table that he killed Uriah and he, he committed adultery and that, that, that had a direct impact on his physical health. His bones were wasting away. And people read that and they think, well, it's a Psalm. It's just poetry. And it's just this hyperbole, but there's all sorts of Psalms and Proverbs that talk about a direct correlation to what happens to us Physically, when we harbor anger, uh, sin, guilt, and unforgiveness in our heart, those are doorways, those are footholds that the enemy can 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 get his foot in the door. They're they're open doors if if we don't get those things cleaned up. Wow, uh, wow, yeah, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, um. I've been having heart pain for probably the past, I don't know, four months, like around the heart. And I think it's probably related to primarily like my sleep apnea because uh, I got a like a deviated septum. I can feel it flapping when I sleep, you know, and it's just, yeah, I get like no oxygen when I sleep. It's It's awful. So you go to bed tired. You can feel your body not breathing when you're trying to sleep and then you wake up exhausted and like it creates even with a CPAP, like it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> but I know that there's probably some stuff that like I got to work out with God that might have a direct, you know, correlation on that. And I mean, you know, like I'm going to a cardiologist tomorrow. So like everybody watching this, you know, you got an empty slot on that prayer list. Go ahead and put me there because <laughs> I've got no idea what that's going to be like. Yeah. Um, but it, it just, you know, it's been a problem that's been there for a while, but then as you were talking about, uh, seizures and everything, my sleep apnea when I was on vacation, uh, was so bad. Cause I tried to like lay low and just relax and just cause I was stressed and I, you know, job sucks and home life's just, you know, it is what it is. And just life feels kind of, you know, just, ugh. and, uh, so I would try to sleep a lot, but the problem is when you have like the sleep apnea that, you know, makes it really hard to get going in the morning, you feel tired you have like this pain on either side of your heart, you know, from where like you're probably just not getting enough oxygen, you know, or I don't know, maybe there's a tumor there or something like who knows what it could be. But anyways, um, you just can't ever get any rest, you know, but there was one night where like, you know, because sometimes I'm like, man, am I having heart attacks in my sleep or am I going to have it? Like, is it because it sucks trying to, you know, breathe. But there was one time where it felt like uh, like I was having a seizure in my sleep. But I remember being in that like half awake, half asleep state mm. and like seeing a woman with curly blonde hair walk away from me in my Whoa. dream. When was this? Uh, was mm. About three weeks ago when I was on vacation. Wow. Oh man. Yeah. And I mean, just in my dream. I went on vacation wow. right when he yeah. got back. So we haven't had a chance to talk about any of this. Yeah, man. But it's the only time. I mean, oh. I've woken up like not being able to breathe. I've woken up, you know, with like heart pain and, you know, I've, I don't know, you know, steroids help uh, because they reduce the inflammation, you yeah. know, but that was the only time where I've ever had anything in my dream where I like felt like, and who knows if I really did, or if I just dreamed that I did, who knows? But yeah, like, you know, it's, it, it was weird. And there was like somebody that I was watching walk away from me in my dream. And then, you know, and I think about all the crap that's in my life, all this stuff that I, that I wrestle with or that I'm angry about or that I'm, you know, stressed about and everything. And it's like, you know, and, and you know, your limbs tingle, you feel just drained in the bones. Like you really do. You feel just drained in the bones, you know? And it's like, God, okay. What is it that, you know, maybe that's what it is. Maybe there's something there that I have to like confess and get out and, and fix. But I definitely think there is a correlation to like, yeah. you know, what people are talking about. Like, yeah. And then even actually funny thing, like, very first episode of true detective woody harrelson says that he's like the normal cop you know but he's like i don't hold grudges i think that's a kind of 
crap that leads to cancer, you know. <laughs> hey, baby, you could be right. I don't know. Straight from the old T, baby. Yeah. You know? So I mean I think there yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to what you're what you're talking about there, uh, Vicky. But it's just interesting to hear you talk about the seizure part, you know. Yeah, yeah, there, there's a lot there. There there's a lot there. Um and uh, another thing that I've really noticed a lot, you know, with sleep paralysis people that I've talked to, uh I sort of apologize to people now, but when they call me and they want to talk about their sleep paralysis, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to think I'm nuts. And it, I'm embarrassed asking it because it seems so unrelated, but are you a mouth breather? Mm. And mm -hmm. uh, so far, everyone I've spoken to has said, yeah, what does that have to do with it? And so I, I, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's like, if you're a mouth breather, they're after you, you know, but, but mm. what I'm saying is... <laughs> Uh, it's kind of a which came first, the chicken or the egg thing. There is so much in sleep paralysis that has to do with breath. Yeah. Breathing. Yeah, your breath. People yeah. think that they can't breathe. They feel like they're suffocating. Oh, um, I've noticed, too, a lot of times when I wake up with a sleep paralysis, I'm, I've am i reverted and I'm breathing out of my mouth. And, uh, and people will talk about all the saliva in their mouth being dried out just because of the intense breathing in and out mm -hmm. of their mouth. And... Uh, I never really thought much of it, but, you know, then um, I'm not even sure anymore how I kind of put two and two together with this. But uh, when so I, I was living in Minnesota for, at the time I've since moved, but uh, I was living in Minnesota at the time of the whole George Floyd thing. And that happened not too far from where we lived. And it became a mantra. I can't breathe. And people had it on their T-shirts and they were painting wall murals. And this was going on at the same time as COVID, where the CDC websites were all talking about trouble breathing, you know, and hmm. once that was kind of on my radar, I started realizing there's a mantra going on all over. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Yep. And anytime there's like a mantra like that, it, it could actually be like a sigil or a it could be spell casting yes you know let's get let's get yeah. everybody on planet earth to think that they can't breathe and uh i started noticing that you know breath is really a huge integral part of sleep paralysis people can't breathe and they're struggling to breathe they feel like they're being crushed or paralyzed and um now i'm talking to people and they're saying that uh a lot of sleep paralysis people they have sleep apnea or they've been diagnosed with that or they um, have low or too high blood oxygen levels when they sleep. You know, their their fitness watch is showing um, that they're out of range when they're sleeping. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in scripture about the breath of God. And in fact, in, in the Greek, the word for breath also like pneuma, it also means spirit. So spirit, yeah. the word mm -hmm. for spirit is the same as breath, a wind it can mean as well. And so you've got God taking a lump of unanimated clay and the difference between a lump of unanimated clay and a living, breathing humanoid is that he breathed into it and there's scriptures that talk about when we die our our flesh returns to the earth and our breath returns to god and so you you see too that in a lot of demonic attack situations it's the throat it's the breath it's the breath that has to bite you in the neck and it's i'm feeling strangled and i think that their violence and their aggression towards our throat and our neck and our breath is that is what separates us from life mm -hmm. and death. And it that is the part of us that is the the image of God. We're we're the the breath, the spirit of God breathed in us. And it's almost like they're I, I'm not saying they're not attacking us because they are, but it's almost like are they trying to squeeze that breath out? Is that the real enemy that they're targeting? So anytime I start hearing things that specifically are seizure-like or related to breathing, uh, I take a little bit of a closer look if there's other things at play yeah. as well. There's normal activity going on, there's sleep process, those are the kind of things where I would begin to start praying and asking God, is my 
breathing problem? Are my seizures, are you know, all the stuff that people are saying has to do with stress or genetics? Is there something more to it? Because it's just not normal that the Grim Reaper is showing up in my bedroom every night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. Uh, just kind of as an aside, when it comes to deliverance ministry in general, uh, what's your opinion of people who charge for deliverance ministry? Hey everyone, I'm Jonathan Goss with the Gosslings. Give your inner Christian warrior something to really gravitate towards and feed upon with Heavenly Realms, a series of seven novels about angelic warfare written by me, yours truly. It is masculine, warrior-based fiction that is biblically based, but is extremely gratifying for the warrior in all of you. It is available on Amazon in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. If you like it, leave a review. If you want signed copies, you can always email us at thegoslingsgroup at gmail.com. And I would really love to hear from you. Again, Heavenly Realms by Jonathan Goss, available on Amazon. Check it out. That's a tough one because I, I I don't know what people are thinking. I, I do believe that a worker is worth their wages. And yeah. if that's if that's their full time ministry, they deserve to have an income to feed their family. You know, if 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 it, if that's their ministry, that's their whole job. Uh, they shouldn't have to starve to death. And you know, I, I even get that a little bit too. There's people that think that you know I should just give my book away to everybody. You know, like like I've just got thousands of them sitting in my house that. I didn't have to pay for it, you know? So <laughs> you, you know, too, that's huh? the, nice. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, I mean, at, at some point, you know, we, we've got to feed ourselves and pay bills and things like that. But, you know, like for me, this is where I draw the line. Uh, if you want my book, you buy it. But if you're suffering with sleep paralysis and you're being tormented at night and you don't know what to do and you're scared and you're at the end of the rope and you call me or you email me and you say, can I talk, talk, to, talk to you? I'm not going to charge someone to talk to me. You know, I've, I've been through this before. Not everybody has the means. And so uh, I'm, I wouldn't charge to – I personally wouldn't charge to set somebody free, you know, uh, it's it's a tough question because I don't want to act like I know the motives or the intent. Now, if someone's charging for it and they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and they're driving around in a Bentley, I would certainly question that uh, because how much are you charging? And it, it's a tough question. I, I personally wouldn't want to do it. I personally wouldn't want to charge for it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. There was just, I, the only reason I asked is that you'll come across, a, you, you, you'll come across a minister, a deliverance ministry. And it all seems to revolve around the, you know, like the one main dude and his personality and his speaking engagements. And yes. Oh, know, yeah. And it's, and it, and it, it just, there's something that's sat wrong with me. I've seen it several times. It kind of sits wrong with me. And I always yeah. wonder about what about the people who maybe can't afford it? Do they just go on being oppressed or possessed? You know, I know. like what do you, you know, I, it would the would the would the apostles in Acts charge <laughs> someone to lay their hands on that person and cast out the? I mean, it's rhetorical, really. And cast out this demon, yeah. but it'll cost you twenty. That's what shekels. Simon the sorcerer was yeah. doing in Acts. That's exactly what he was right, doing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So well, anyway. bad and, Simon. Yeah, the bad Simon. Right. Yeah. And Antipas, who's mentioned in the book of Revelation, Antipas was a disciple of John. And Antipas was in Pergamon, which was, you know, in Turkey. And Pergamon had one of the yep, yep. seat of Satan, and it had one of the largest Asclepions in the second century. And the Asclepions made big bucks from healing. You'd come in. And you'd drink your little ayahuasca elixir and you'd be high as a kite and then you'd astral project and you'd dream your cure. And then if you were cured, your payment was you would take whatever body part was healed and you would go out to a uh, metallurgist or whatever and you would get a body part fashioned Cast. in gold or silver, right? Yep. 
And this is why, you know, the, the holy hemorrhoids got put in the Ark of the Covenant after the Philistines returned it, right? They got the, the you know, the the hemorrhoids from the rats. And so that was their payment um, because they were healed when they gave the, the Ark back. And so that was the way they paid their gods was gold emblems of the, the body part, right? So when Antipas came into town and he was healing in the name of Jesus Christ for free, it was shutting down the Asclepion business, right? Because they were making money. And if you can be 100% cured without any side effects, paranormal side effects, you're going to go to the guy who's free uh, as opposed to going to the Asclepion and having to come up with gold and silver payment and then having you know demonic attachments for the rest of your life. And so Antipas, the reason he was a martyr is because they told him that he had to, you know, take down his shingle, so to speak, and repent to, to Zeus by offering a sacrifice to Zeus. And he refused to do it. And so he was put into a huge effigy of a, of a bull or something and burned yeah. alive. And oh, so yeah. the, the testimony of the faithful Antipas, and that's exactly what got him into trouble, is that he was healing people for free because uh, he had the anointing of the Holy Spirit to heal people for free. And so, um, you know, and then you can look at people like Paul, who he did all of his ministry for free, but then he was a tent maker. So over here, he he had a business where he could, you know, make ends meet. So, uh, so for, the for those medical... people who are in full-time ministry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. So it sounded like you're saying the medical industry at the time. Oh, yeah. So would charge yeah, so, for healing, but other people, yeah. Christians, would pray and God would heal that person. The Christians wouldn't charge; they get healed for free, and then those Christians were were punished. So, if someone now develops cancer, interestingly, the only legal treatments are the expensive chemotherapy yeah. and radiation, maybe surgery, and that's yeah. cheap. Yeah, <laughs> but any and the chemo can kill you, and it can. And it did. It killed our mom. And if the cure for cancer is out there, I do. it'll never be for free. And they, they yeah. don't want you. They don't want to talk about diet. They don't want to talk about anything else. Yeah. Crushed up. These are your options. Seeds. These three things. Mm -hmm. That's so make, yep. that yep. makes so much yep. sense to me. Alkaline your body, crushed up apricot seeds. There's so many like homeopathic remedies that, you know yep. what? I mean, I watched my mom, you know, die of a C. diff infection because of chemotherapy. So you know what? I'll yep. try some crushed up apricot seeds yep. and alkaline my body. You yep. know, I mean, yep, yep. Same, same with my mom and my dad and I. Say if we knew then what we knew now, we would have done things differently. But we didn't know. But that—that's yeah. the irony. Part of what woke us up was that we did lose her. You know, and so it's tough. I—I I have a whole chapter in the book on the Asclepions, the ancient healing temples, and. It's tie into modernity. Uh, nothing has changed. It's, it's the same sort of uh, modus operandi as, as in the past. And it's funny. I wrote that chapter in 2019, and I thought, oh, this this book won't even get published. Like, no one's going to believe that there's some sort of like agenda in the medical industry. And then by the time the book got published, I thought, oh, okay, people are not going to have a problem with this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Right. Yeah. It's oh, good timing. Okay. Yeah, it was good timing. <laughs> oh man. Um, well, I know we're pressed for time, and uh, Vicky, you've given us uh over three hours. I think. I think we. I think we're Ooh. three and a half hours. Yeah. yeah, this has been awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. been fantastic. I'll send you. Um, I'll send you. I'll. I'll send you my bill. <laughs> <laughs> your uh, your charitable gift donation form that we can fill out. You know. Exactly. For, exactly. That's for tax purposes, you know. Um, I do have a friend who works for uh, works for the man who watches this channel sometimes. So okay, yeah. Uh, I we did get um, we did get a question from one of our patrons, uh, Mike Fisher, who is also the sponsor one of our sponsors. He uh, he runs uh, JardaniJovanovic .com. It's a hair and skincare products for men website. He makes awesome stuff. He's been a big help, big fan of the channel. Uh, he just had uh, a couple of questions and like, he had no idea if you had anything to say about this stuff or not, but, um, we'll go ahead and ask anyways, and just kind of see, um, yeah. and then we'll run through our end of show obligatories and everything and let you go. You've been super generous with your time. So, uh, he says, uh, he wants to know your thoughts on King Charles as the antichrist, 
Uh, the war going on right now between Israel and Hamas, possibly leading to Psalm 83, neighboring countries, Isaiah 17 about Damascus being no more. I have no idea what that means. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, and he admits he has no idea if like any of this, whether it's King Charles or Psalm 83 or Isaiah 17 and Damascus is like in your wheelhouse or not. But you have anything to say on any of those topics, please feel free. Yeah, to yeah. Eliminate. So I, this might sound like a cop out, but I am actually going to be doing a podcast in January and the whole entire topic is going to be Psalm 82, 83 and 91. So yes. I will flesh out all of that um, then. So sometime in January, I'll keep you posted. Where's that going to uh, be so that uh, we can It is going to be, I, I didn't want to uh, advertise another podcast. In case oh, okay. that wasn't. <laughs> no, that's fine. But, Go for it. It's going to be with Bo Kennedy on the Bump podcast, if you guys are familiar with Bo. Great guy. So, uh, yeah, with King Charles, I don't know. Uh, you know, you look at, I could make war with King Charles. You know, I he seems he appears to like women, even though I don't quite understand his taste. <laughs> but, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I I don't know. You know, this threw me for loop, and I'm sorry, guys. My, the the sun is setting here now, and I'm getting like this weird like yeah, uh angelic it. glow <laughs> uh, i'm sorry that's, right. that's about perfect that, guys. just I, like I've that been right. I, i've been i've been trying to dodge it but okay um so i kind of have my paradigm blown the other day and i'm trying to think if i i i read this thing where someone said there's no mention of the antichrist in revelation i'm like shut up so I went and I did the research and there is no mention of the Antichrist in the book of Revelation. Now, John, who wrote Revelation, after he wrote Revelation, he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And we know from 1st John, he mentions Antichrist. So John is the guy who talked about Antichrists. Um, but the way he worded it was um, that there are many Antichrists there's one among us now, and there are many more to come. And so it sort of blew my mind that there's no antichrist, you know, the guy with the big right. A on his chest and the cape, right? And I'm like, what? Because, I mean, we know there's a dragon and there's a beast. We know Apollyon gets let out. Um, Satan gets locked up. And um, there's no antichrist mentioned in what so it it sort of blew my mind and i i had cognitive dissonance and i was really sort of messed up for a few days trying to figure that out mm -hmm. so where i am you know and again we're all a product of our traditions and our teaching and if this is what we were told all through sunday school and through the little movies we had watched in church that scared mess out of us and that stuff uh thief in the night like oh my gosh that was a... anyway so um where i started what i started thinking was if the enemy is smart and he he's not sovereign and he's not omniscient and if no one knows the day or the hour if you're the enemy you have to be prepared at every moment Yep. Which means you would have to have an Antichrist figure in every generation. Yep. Waiting in the as, wings. Waiting in the wings. Time. Yep. Yep. Just as ready soon to as one pull. dies, there better be another one, right? So it would make sense that there was an Antichrist alive at the time that John was still alive. Mm -hmm. There's always been an Antichrist, whether it's Constantine or Hitler or whoever, you know. Nero, and, you know, right. Stalin. Obama. Right. right. So, <laughs> so depending upon what Charles ends up doing, because I, I do think that the British Empire owns and runs a lot more than we think. They, they don't just, they're not just some puppet that sits there and, you know, rules a tiny little island. I mean, we, we've even heard of all the land that the royal family owns in the United States, and we've heard all the, the fodder about we didn't really win the American revolution and we're right. a corporation and they still own us. I don't know what's true and what's not, but the fact yeah. is I, I do think that the British monarchy probably has more power than we think. And so I guess what I would say is, is 
Prince, uh, Prince Charles is King Charles, <laughs> the Antichrist of our generation. It, it remains to be seen what he's going to do. Um, so absolutely. But I think the way I would maybe word it now until I've done further research is uh, we can, the Antichrist, capital T, capital A, I think I would say the Antichrist of our generation, perhaps. And But the Antichrist that's alive when it all hits the fan, I don't know if he's the Antichrist so much as he's the one guy that won the lottery and happened to be the one that got chosen when it all hit the fan. Because if they don't know the day or the hour, they're always going to have one. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Good point. That's, um, that's kind of why I like the Gary Wayne approach of like all the royal bloodlines are jockeying yeah for that you know yeah. at any given moment they probably do have one on tap ready to be deployed yeah. but satan doesn't know the day or the hour so um and then uh isaiah 17 damascus being no more i have no idea what he's re- what my buddy is referring to here you have any yeah. insight on that at all I, ha- I have not studied that out of course now i'm curious yeah. and i'm going to go and look at it but <laughs> uh no and let me just tell, I'm just going to be so forthright with you guys and I'll probably like lose every follower, but I'm just, I'm telling you that I'm at such a point of confusion right now. And I'm at such a point where if the media says it, it can't be true. Like they have completely lost faith with me. Same here. And so yeah. this, this is the way that I am praying for the current crisis over in the Middle East right now because I'm so lost as to what side is who and what, and are, are these the line of Seth or are they Edomites and are they real Jews? And are they, I don't know. I'm so confused. <laughs> and so, yep. so I am praying for the peace of Jerusalem because the Bible tells me that right. we should do that. Right. So what I say is, and, and I have been praying for came up and I will say, father, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the safety and the protection and the, the the victory of your chosen people, whoever or wherever they are. Because I don't know who they are or where they are anymore. And, and, and I would think, you know, another complication here is that the 10 lost tribes of Israel, they were synchronized into the nations. So after... Rehoboam. So you had David and then Solomon and then Rehoboam. And in Rehoboam's uh, uh, reign, the kingdom was split and Rehoboam only ruled two tribes and then someone else ruled the 10 tribes. So when, when Judah went into Babylonian captivity and they were brought back to the land, the 10 lost tribes went into captivity, but were never brought back because Judah synchronized their religion. They brought in a whole bunch of other gods, but still worshipped Yahweh in the temple. Whereas the 10 lost tribes, because they no longer had geographical access to the temple, they took in all the other gods and forgot Yahweh. So Judah was brought back to the land. The 10 lost tribes were lost. And for thousands of years now, they have synchronized into the nations. So I don't think the enemy even knows who those 10 tribes are anymore. I think he knows who Judah is. uh, And he can find them and he can hassle them. But if Satan knew where all the 10 tribes were and all those descendants were, he would attack and he would retaliate. And I think a big reason, I know I'm getting woo here, guys, but... I think a big reason why there's such a massive push for people to do their lineage and their genealogy and their ancestry and their 23 and me and their he's DNA. He's trying to find out where they are. He's looking for us. It's yeah. not that anybody mm. cares whether we're Swedish or Russian. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they have a massive agenda to find those 10 lost tribes. Yeah. That's my yeah. theory. That's interesting. That's you know, really interesting. That's cool. I haven't heard anybody say that before. That's, yeah, that's uh, the first. That's a pretty novel concept, and uh, you might be onto something, Vicky. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Do you have anything else? No, I'm good. Okay. Last question before uh before we go. Uh what as a as a dedicated lifelong un, unapologetic Metallica fan, what is that <laughs> awesome shirt that you're wearing? It says Master of Prophets on it. It says Mashiach, which is, means Messiah. It's awesome. Where yes, can I yeah. get that awesome t-shirt? Where do where does he get these wonderful toys? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I a friend of mine was wearing it and I practically stole it off his back and it's like oh, I don't make them anymore, but I'll find you one. But anyway, the, the guy makes them again. And there, there is a website. I will. I have to track it down. I'll find it and I'll send it to you. But uh, there's a guy that makes these shirts, Mashiach, Master of Prophets, and he has an Iron Maiden one also, which I nice. can't remember the gist of that one. But yeah, yeah, he's got a Metallica and an Iron Maiden one, so yeah. <laughs> I, I I just really hope it's like an it's like Archangel Michael, but he's like the trooper, you know? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that is so awesome. <laughs> I I had a, I had an awesome uh, end times dream once a few years ago, and it was yeah. so cool because uh, me and my family we were all being gathered into this huge uh, like assembly place, and it was like the wedding feast of the lamb. And the tables we were all distracted, like oh, this beautiful, this is pure gold, and and uh, they were like the doors were starting to close, and we're all like we made it and when is jesus going to show up and this the wedding piece of the lamb and all of a sudden as the there were hundreds of doors because it was this huge building and the doors were starting to close and the light was going out and as we were sitting down at these tables i was like you guys this isn't the wedding feast they're trapping us in here this is like the wrong side and so all of a sudden (laughs) we all tore as fast as we could out of this building and we were running like into the distance it was all like nature and whatever and (laughs) i swear to you as we are running run to the hills start playing in my dream (laughs) behind us yes nice and 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 i i I woke up at that point and i was like whoa yeah (laughs) that got pretty rad towards the end (laughs) Oh uh, yeah, why? Well, why well, always got to wake up when it gets good? You know? I know. Don't don't you hate it when the dream cuts out the solo? Oh my yeah, gosh! Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> when I just have when I just have you know, Kirk Hammett just you know, or Jason Newstead just like like the in Mad Max when he's like on top of the caravan, you know, with the flames <laughs> spouting out the guitar, you know, and I just got Jason Newstead doing that <laughs> on his bass while like all the the legions of warrior <laughs> angels are coming over and it's just fire and you know I'm like now i got to wake up i went through all that other crap yeah. <laughs> i know anyway. i know right right <laughs> uh okay so like we always do vicky uh with all of our guests um uh the motto on the goslings is take up the broken sword of your father and strike down the darkness. the darkness so as we depart after another wonderful time with you uh so generous with your afternoon and we greatly appreciate it on this sunday uh three and a half hours i think yeah. is that right three and a half hours over three hours yeah yeah um <laughs> any words of wisdom for our audience as to how they might go forth and strike down the darkness oh man You know, I know that it's not fun and it's not poetic, but we absolutely, as a church and as a nation, we have to repent. And I don't mean just, oh, sorry. There is an obscure verse in the Old Testament where Yahweh is giving the ground rules of the camp. And he said, I will walk among you. I will fight your battles for you. I will stave off the diseases for you. But if there's dung in the camp, I will not walk among you because he's holy, right? So in other words, build some latrines. I am not walking through a camp that is filled with crap. And I just see America now in my mind filled with crap. Our latrines have need to be dug and there is blood crying out on the ground. Um, and there is no way we are going to win a physical or a spiritual battle until we dig the trains and clean up the crap so that the holy God wearing sandals can walk through it without his feet getting mucked up. 
And that comes in the form of repentance, not only for our own sin, but uh, it's time our hearts were broken over what we've done to this country and what we've done to, to God. And we will not get our country back until we humble ourselves before him. Amen. Amen to that. That's awesome, Vicki. Thank you. Um, anything, uh, where can people find you? Where's the best place? And anything coming up that you want people to know about? Yep, absolutely. So, uh, com. You can get me on Instagram, Vicki Joy Author. You can get my book, They Only Come Out at Night, Exposing the Dark Weapon of Sleep Paralysis at lamarzuli.net. And uh, the only thing I got coming up it's a for great the read. remainder of this. You got to get this. I've read it, it twice. Love it. <laughs> That's right. And hey, if you don't have sleep paralysis, if you are a pastor, a youth leader, a parent, a grandparent, please put the book on your shelf as, as disclosure continues and as things continue the way they are you will run into someone who tells you the craziest thing happened to me last night. And if you don't have the right answers, they're going to go to the new agers. They're going to go to the psychologists. They're going to get medicated. They're going to get in even deeper trouble. So have it on hand, um, have it before you need it, because I, I have a hunch that the days are coming when you will need it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, Vicki. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, and uh, maybe next time Thanks, we guys. get together, we can have Gary Wayne with us. Uh, that would be awesome. That would right? be That'd so be cool. fantastic. I'm putting Love it out there, guy. so it's going to be super embarrassing if it doesn't happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love All right. you, Vicky. See you. Have a great night. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this conversation, you like this interview and you want to hear some more of it, including some down and dirty stuff we're not allowed to say here on YouTube, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the goslings, sign up for one of our tiers and enjoy some exclusive content. That's right. And remember, keep it cool. And these are interviews that strike down the darkness. That's right, baby. A vertical punch. <laughs>